My name is Rashmi Halkar Singh. I'm the deputy editor of Headache. It's my pleasure to be joined today by one of the authors of a recent publication entitled A Retrospective Analysis of the Use of Candesartan for Migraine Prevention in Adolescents. Welcome, Dr. Pat Niyat. I'm so happy to have you join us. Thank you, Dr. Halkar Singh, for having me. I'm happy to be here. So this is a really interesting study. Um, you know, we we're always talking about treatments for migraine in the adolescent population. And I'm just curious, what prompted you to choose to study uh, Candace Arten? Yeah, so um, I first learned about Candace Arten's use for migraine prevention about 10 years ago now when I was a pediatric headache fellow. And I've prescribed it routinely, but usually it's been as fourth, fifth line, you know, after our other um, more, more commonly used migraine preventives um, haven't been particularly helpful. So I think th that tends to be because it's one of the lesser known migraine preventive medications. And then over the years, I found some barriers with insurance coverage. So this led me to want to review our own headache clinics experience, headache clinic uh, patient records to evaluate, well, is is are there barriers you know with insurance from from what i can see from the patient record and and two is it is it helpful for our patient population so i think yeah. that's interesting and you know candesartan is one of those medications that's gotten more attention within the adult population as well as i think back on my own experience as an adult headache neurologist it's not a medication that we were using that much maybe even a decade ago, but it is now one that we reach for more often and there's definitely more evidence for that. So it's, it was interesting to see that you're, you know, you have a similar experience with your uh, adolescent population. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, I think, two RCTs out there right now, one that compared Candace Arten, uh propranol on placebo and one Candace Arten by itself, and then more recently, a retrospective chart review and so, you know, from from training, I was used to to using it, but I I didn't find that people around me were using it as much. And I wanted to see, well, well, is what what are the barriers, if any, to hundred percent? The barriers always come up. So tell me about your study. What did you do? What did you find? And was there anything surprising? Sure. Yeah. So it was it was a retrospective chart review on adolescents seen at the Texas Children's Headache Center over a period of, of six years um, and who were prescribed candesartan for migraine prevention. Uh, we, the primary outcome was headache frequency in days per month prior to initiation and at first follow up, which was variable anywhere from two to six months after initiation. Um, but we also wanted to see if we had data on a secondary outcome of frequency of, of moderate to uh, severe headache days per week. You know, many of, of our patients seen in headache clinic have refractory headache disorders, high baseline headache frequency that doesn't budge much. So, so as much as, as possible, I wanted to see if we could find also evaluate intensity um, pre and post initiation as a measure of effectiveness too. So um, as far as more specific details, we, we evaluated 71 patient records and off, off the bat, we found that about 23% um, or 16 of those, at least from, from the chart, had insurance denial that prevented them from even starting. So close to a fourth. And then of the complete re records and, and kids or adolescents who weren't lost to follow up or took the medicine for at least six weeks, um, we ended up with 35 patients. So um, the, the main, main findings, I suppose, is there's a statistically significant reduction in monthly headache days pre and post initiation um, at, at follow up. And that was a difference of, of 23.9 versus 20.4. Um, as far as, as frequency of moderate to severe headache days uh, per week, uh, it's, it's a little harder to dig and find that, right, in the patient records. But we did find that um, 
there was a statistically significant uh, reduction in the mean frequency of moderate to severe headache days uh, per week pre and post initiation. And that was a difference of about a day. So 3.7 versus 2.7. So um, side effects weren't, weren't that frequent. It was in about three different patients, about 9%. And those were you know, fatigue, mild lightheadedness, mild blood pressure decrease. So um, overall, it, it was it was tolerable. Um, as far as any surprising results, I think um, I didn't go into this having specific expectations. It started as, you know, just a quality improvement or just a chart review. I think um, as, as headache specialists, you know, we treat patients with a high burden, high level of, of migraine related disability. So this can lead to some pessimism, at least on my part regarding medication effectiveness. But um, I I will say, I, I what, one thing that surprised me was, um, about 20% of the patients, seven, reported a reduction of 50% or more head, uh, headache days post-initiation. So um, you always smile when that happens, right? If you're in that fifth of patients that, that respond really well, that, that's a good thing, and, and that makes us happy. I think one other um, thing that came out of the analysis was that there wasn't any significant difference in, in the primary outcome or secondary outcomes amongst patients who were on um, more than two versus uh, two or fewer concurrent migraine preventives, as well as if, if they had um, tried the same number of previous migraine preventives. So granted, it's, it's a small study, <laughs> so, um, but I think if, if you look at other studies, I think the the Messina 2020 chart retrospective chart review in adults found that having or having failed up to nine preventives too didn't predict treatment failure with candesartan. So um, I I think it was interesting. Granted, it's it's a retrospective review. So yeah, I think that's a really good summary. So. You know, as a clinician, um, what can what can clinicians take from from your uh, from your work? You know, should we con be considering candesartan more often for our adolescent population? Do we need more studies? You mentioned earlier about barriers. W are you able to address that with with this at all? Um, yeah. What's the, what are the clinical takes here? Sure. So I think. Um... You know, our results suggest that certainly it's well tolerated. It can be helpful in reducing overall headache frequency and and intensity too in, in adolescents with a high headache burden, high high baseline headache frequency. And so um, <laughs> um, and so I, I think we definitely need larger perspective studies to look at both safety efficacy in, in pediatric and adolescent population, but I think from from a candesartan standpoint, we could always use more tools in our tool belt, right? For migraine preventives, um, especially in the adolescent population where CGRP targeted therapies aren't yet FDA approved, they cost you know an arm and a leg out of pocket, uh, and so um, this is well, one a more affordable therapy. As far as the insurance question. I found over the years it's gotten more easily covered or lower out of pocket costs. So, um, with the headache clinic nurses, we're looking at good RX, and you know we're always trying to offer uh, you know alternatives. And and I think the the lowest cost we found was twelve dollars, like with a a good RX coupon, twelve to twenty dollars per month for a monthly supply, and. Uh, I think probably comparably to ninety dollars a month full price, which you know kids don't have jobs, they don't earn earn salaries, but but certainly it can be more affordable. Uh, and I found that over the years. I think we're also when we we're treating teenagers who might not be as compliant. Granted, adults aren't either, aren't always compliant. I think we're looking at lower side effect profiles, ease of administration. 
can to certain, um, you know, we used a range of eight to 16 milligrams once a day, uh, 16 milligrams, I think is the typical adult dose we use. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's easier because it's dosed once a day versus twice daily, right? I think um, I was probably influenced too earlier in my career because I used to work at a concussion clinic. So we're trying to uh, find alternatives with with lower side effect profiles, you know, uh, to be specific, like propranolol, you can have exercise intolerance. And if you're a young teenage athlete, you know, that might be might be limiting uh, with topiramate, especially if you have a history of multiple concussions, post-traumatic headache, that can, um, or in anyone, lead to some word-finding difficulty, cognitive side effects. So, so can to certain at least you have you have just more more tools to work with. So I think it's it's a reasonable option to to offer patients. Yeah, I think that's a really great summary. Anytime we have additional tools we can offer our patients, it's always it's always a good thing. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much for speaking with me today. I really appreciate our conversation and the work that you and your group have done. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate being here. Mm -hmm.